Hey everyone, Sean Gray here. Um, I just wanted to make this video and I haven't been on social media, I haven't been putting much content out there over the past couple months and I wanted to tell all of you why. I, uh, I had a crazy, I had an awesome experience the past couple months and uh, I feel, shared it with a few people and at first it wasn't received very well uh, but I started sharing it more and more and just kind of everything I've been learning and going through the past couple months and you know a lot of people told me that it was a powerful story and that I should share it with people so this is kind of uh, stepping out of my comfort zone a lot I'm going to be extremely vulnerable with you guys talk about um, my story and kind of the things that led me up to um, these past couple months and the reason why I chose to do the things that I did over the past couple months what I did over the past couple months and what I learned from it so hopefully you guys will get some value out of it and uh, and you'll appreciate it so so the story goes like this um, and I'll try to make it brief as possible because I know long videos are hard to watch but you know when I was 22 years old I'm 25 now I graduated college and uh, I knew I wasn't going to get a job, I knew I didn't want to get a job, and so I went into the entrepreneur world and went to financial education and investing, and as a lot of you guys know, if you've been following any of my stuff or friends with me or anything like this, you know I kind of went down that road of entrepreneurship and uh, financial education, personal development, invested a ton of time, money, and energy getting around the most successful people I could. And, you know, long story short, I went on to have some a decent amount of success. You know, I was making, you know, a nice six-figure income. Um, I had a lot of freedom. I was traveling the world. I was meeting all my business heroes. Um, I had built a vision board, like I'm sure many of you guys have, and with pictures of cars and houses and planes and you know, nice suits and all this stuff. And you know, one day I was I was looking at it and I was just like, you know, I. I got it. Like I got all this stuff. Sure, I might not own all these houses, but I'm living and staying in five-star hotels and and staying at nice houses. Sure, I might not own, you know, Maseratis and Ferraris and Audis and nice cars, but I'm driving all those nice cars. And so I was living the life of of a millionaire. And that's kind of what my whole message was: was that it's not about the money, but it's about the lifestyle. And so this whole lifestyle and this person that I set out to be on, on this vision board, I got it. I was, I was living that life and I was standing in front of my vision board in my bathroom one day um, and I was just unfulfilled. And I mean, if you guys know me, you know, I'm not a, I wasn't a negative guy by any means. I wasn't an angry guy. I was pretty much always a positive guy and I still am a positive guy. But, you know, I, it, looking at me, you would think I was happy and, and I had a great life. And, I did to a certain degree, but it was all judging from, from the ego side of things. You know, I was um, still unfulfilled in my heart. And so as I was standing there in front of the, my vision board, realizing that, you know, I became the person that I set out to be and I was living this life that I wanted to be, you know, I'm sure there were still milestones to get to, but there was something missing. I wasn't fulfilled, you know. And uh, so I went to this Tony Robbins event. And if you guys have ever been to a Tony Robbins event, you know that it's, it's hard to not be engaged and not have high energy there. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and I was sitting in there and I was really trying hard to engage and, and I just couldn't, and I just couldn't get involved. Even somebody came up to me and was like, it's okay, like you can smile, like get into it. And I was really trying. And if you also know me, you know I go to a ton of live events, conferences, trade shows, seminars, retreats, all kinds of stuff like this. And, it's not like me to leave early. I'm normally there interacting and talking to everybody, but for some reason I just couldn't get engaged at this Tony Robbins event. And it was my first time seeing him too. And so I, I ended up leaving the event halfway through. And, uh, and this is where the story kind of uh, gets, a little, get a, gets a little out there, but you know, this is all just my story and what happened to me. So I'm just gonna keep on going with it. So I left, I left the event and I went home and I was standing in my room and I was just so frustrated. I felt stuck, you know? I felt just just like there was something more, you know? It was maybe a, a crude analogy, and I mean, this is the most humble way possible. I felt like, like Neo in the Matrix, you know? Like you're just going about your life and you're going about your things, but you know like there's, there's something else there, there's something more. And, uh, you know, I would, I would hear voices and, and see things that I knew other people weren't hearing and, and seeing, and I would always discredit and suppress it as if like, you know, you know, it's it's nothing or, you know, it's just my mind talking to me or whatever. 
But I'm standing in this room after I left this Tony Robbins event, I'm standing in my, my bedroom in Las Vegas, and I just start crying out to, you know, whatever you want to call it, God, um, just whoever's there, you know, and I was just, you know, like, I'm done. Like, I was so fed up. I was like, you know, there's just so much pain and so much suffering and betrayal and greed and, and you know, success was always money and achievement and, you know, having respect in this you know, everything American Western business culture. And I was living up to this and I was trying to fit into, you know, building these brands and being who, who I thought I needed to be to be successful in the business world. Because in my mind, success equaled happiness. I had no idea that there were two completely different things and that there are plenty of people who are successful who aren't genuinely happy on the inside. And that's kind of what was happening to me. I had reached a level of success, you know, um, at a relatively young age. And I'm not saying I was making millions and, you know, had everything I possibly wanted, but I could see how I was getting there and I was seeing how the stuff that I was getting still wasn't fulfilling me. It made me happy for a little bit, but it wasn't fulfilling. So I'm standing in my room and I start crying out like, I'm done, like take me, like I'm so done with this world, I feel stuck in my body, I feel stuck in this world, like if that next dimension is what's next, like take me, I'm, I'm ready now, you know. And all of a sudden this this was insane this was insane okay mind you i've never studied energy i've never studied chakras i've never studied or learned about uh, kundalini or um anything i barely even did yoga i did it a little bit in college because of football but you know so i'm standing in this room and i should start crying out to this being and i'm just like you know i'm done like i take you like take me I'm, i feel stuck all of a sudden this this warm light like yellowish white light that comes down and it's like right here just sitting right right up right above me and it's this presence and it's totally somebody and I can totally sense them and see them even I can visually see them and I start yelling at them or it or whatever it is and I just like like I see you I'm done like take me like I'm done with this world if that's what's next bring me now I'm done and all of a sudden my body started shaking uncontrollably like from from the waist up i just like my my leg or excuse me from the waist down my legs started shaking just violently shaking like uncontrollably shaking and it felt like there were strings in my body and i was being like pulled up and forward you know and it was an insane feeling it was like my Everything in me, like my whole presence was just coming out of my body and just like hovering like right above me. And in the clearest communication back, this presence said to me, like, oh yeah, you, you think you're ready? You think you're ready to come on this side? You have no idea. But you know, I'll let you experience this, but you're going back. And when I came back into my body, like was put back down, it was like I was this piece of glass that was brought up into the sky and just dropped. And everything, everything I knew to be true about life, all my paradigms, all my beliefs about the way the world operated, all my beliefs about myself, my entire ego, my entire existence, everything was just completely shattered. Like I'm talking, I was instantly nothing. It was, it was insane. And I fell to my knees and I just collapsed. And I kind of came to him and I was like, what the fuck just happened? Like, what was that? I've never experienced anything like that. Mind you, I was completely sober. I wasn't doing some crazy drugs or anything like this. I, it was an insane experience. So I went and started researching, you know, what, what just happened to me? And um, I came across uh, spiritual awakenings and kundalini awakenings in particular. If you're not familiar with kundalini energy, for the sake of the video, I won't go into what it is, but it's essentially just this, at the base of our chakras, this energy that everybody has inside of us, and you can go research it. So, you know, I started reading it. I started reading other people's experiences about having these kundalini awakenings and these spiritual awakenings. I was like, this is exactly what happened to me. And... So I found out that this awakening can be either extremely blissful and exciting and feel super good and amazing, and, but it can also lead to isolation and depression and because you, you, I mean, how do you go back into your normal life, right, after having your entire belief system and your ego and everything you thought you were completely shattered? 
So that's what happened to me. I had this awakening and everything was shattered and I, I had just, I stopped working. I stopped communicating with the world. I stopped putting stuff out on social media. I, I stopped everything. Like I, I just didn't even know how to operate. And I went into this isolation and this deep, deep depression and it got really bad. And this is me being extremely vulnerable with you. But, you know, it got to the point where I was, you know, I was thinking about ending my life because I just didn't see a way back to a normal life, if you will. Not that a normal life was what I was after, but like everything I knew to be true was completely like my whole reality was, was changed. It was insane. And so I got to the point where it was really bad. And I was like, you know, what? I, I got to get out of here. I got to. I gotta go get with nature, I gotta get grounded, I gotta, I gotta do something, I gotta go, go be away from everything. So I made the decision, I um, shut off all my technology, I booked a flight and uh, to Costa Rica. I have no idea what made me choose Costa Rica, um, but I booked a flight to Costa Rica and um, left a few days later, I think it was actually two days later, so as soon as I could get a flight. <laughs> I shut off all my technology and I just went out into the jungle and I was basically living in a treehouse for um, for um, a, almost two weeks. Um, and while I was there, I just I read I read 15 books on love, energy, chakras, um, forgiveness, change, uh, quantum mechanics, quantum quantum physics, metaphysics. I read all kinds of books. Um, I did yoga for probably 25 plus hours. I um, was doing it every day. I meditated for probably 25 plus hours. I ran four and a half kilometers and bathed in the ocean every day. I alkalized my diet. I decalcified my glands. I detoxified myself. And I just went on this whole organic, healthy, and um, kind of just spiritual journey almost. And for the first three days that I was down there in Costa Rica, I was, I was meditating and I was just focusing on my heart chakra and just focusing on opening up my heart to receive love. And it was like I was chipping away at this like hard casing, this hard something in it, you know? And, and for the first three days, mind you, I, I didn't eat. And in this meditation on the third day, I was just going at, like, just tapping away at this hard casing around my heart almost. And all of a sudden, it just cracked open. And this just like, whoosh, this just like almost fluid rushed throughout my body. This energy rushed throughout my body. And I had been dealing with a lot of anxiety and, and stress like in the, over the past couple of years. And I'm talking real bad anxiety, almost to the point of panic attacks. Just like a brick of anxiety just sitting in my gut. And when this... When this thing just cracked open, this meditation, this energy rushed throughout my body, I'm talking instantly. I'm talking instantly a different person. Like instantly that, that brick was gone. Instantly that brick of anxiety just was completely vanished. And I went into this, I'm talking just blissful, amazing, happy, super fulfilled. Like just talking about it's bringing chills back up my neck. But it was, I'm telling you, almost an, or an orgasmic feeling of joy, like the most inexplainable happiness I've ever felt. And when I opened my eyes from this, and <laughs> I know you guys are probably thinking I'm crazy already. And, you know, to be completely honest, I was the guy, you know, nine months ago, judging all <laughs> the people who talked like me and had mandalas on their wall. Uh, as tree hugging hippies who go off and do some crazy hallucinogenics in the jungle or something. This is nothing like that. And mind you, I had never studied anything like this, so it's not like I was looking for this. This is all just stuff that happened to me because I was seeking, I was seeking answers. And um, so, anyways, this I, I opened my eyes after like this meditation and that energy came over me and I could literally see, you may have heard people talk about seeing the divinity or seeing the oneness of everything. I could literally see almost like this mandala pattern in everything. I could see how the chair was connected to the floor and how the, the, the camera was connected to the stand and like the energies were just, how everything was one. And it was insane. I had a new appreciation for everything. And so that was one crazy thing that happened. And so I just, I was, ever since that time, I'd been living in, and almost really still been living in this just extremely blissful, happy state. I haven't gotten angry. I haven't gotten like 
had negative thoughts about people or anything. I mean, if someone if someone does something to quote unquote hurt me or um, you know, it's just they're free to be loved and they're on their journey too. And I understand how everything is perfectly fit together and and there's no coincidence coincidences and it's just it's the most insane feeling ever. And so I was down in Costa Rica and I continued to meditate, continued to do yoga, continued to eat right, and it just kept elevating this level of happiness. I would find myself just laughing for absolutely no reason, just sitting there like, just, like I'm talking pure joy. I don't know if you can see, the, obviously you can see the smile on my face, but you can feel what I'm feeling just talking about it again. Like it's, it's insane. And you know, so I came back from Costa Rica and I was like, I wish that, everybody could experience what I just experienced. And I wanted to create a place, an environment, where people could go to experience this, this, this type of thing. And, uh, you know, since I had, was, had shut off all my technology, all the stuff that I was, was working on um, before I left for Costa Rica was kind of put on hold. And uh, I was working on a project with this guy, and I'm not really close with this guy um, by any means, but, uh, he called me and was like, hey, you know, where you been? What's going on? And uh, he was really inquisitive. And so I, I ended up telling him, I was like, well, if you really want to know, I'll, I'll tell you the story. And I was hesitant to tell him because the first person I told called me, you know, like a tree hugging hippie and thought I went off the deep end. And so, uh, but he was, he kept asking, he was like, no, I genuinely want to know. So I told him and he was like, wow, that's, told him everything I just said pretty much. And he's like, wow, that's an incredible story. Like, I'm so happy for you. Um, and he said, I've never heard about, you know, chakras or studied energy like this or anything like that. Anyways, he calls me later that night and he was like, hey, the craziest thing just happened. I've never heard about the stuff you were talking about. And then I got into a couple conversations and I called one of my old clients who I haven't talked to in over a year. And uh, they both brought up the same thing you were talking about. So he's like, coincidence? I think not, <laughs> right? And so he's like, um, one of them told me to go check out this documentary called The Reality of Truth. And The Reality of Truth was, uh, it's a documentary about um, um, awakening, enlightenment, um, holistic healing. And uh, anyway, so I wasn't doing anything, just sitting around watching doc documentaries like that and reading books. So I immediately popped on the documentary. Uh, it turns out he started watching the documentary at the same time. And I'm watching the documentary and then there's this place called Rhythmia that, and it is this um, life advancement center. It's really a, a resort, life advancement resort. And um, it was like everything I wanted to create from the experience I just had so other people could go have that experience, this place existed. And I was like, wow, like I gotta get involved with this. So there was this guy on the video, um, his name was uh, Gerard Powell. And uh, I went into this manifestation meditation um, right after watching that, that video or that documentary. And I wrote down on a piece of paper, I said prior to going into this meditation, my intention was, I'll be traveling the world speaking on behalf of Rhythmia, working with Gerard Powell to bring peace and enlightenment to as many people as possible. All right. Went into that manifestation, and mind you, this guy, Gerard Powell, he's you know, extremely successful. You know, he started, um, started several companies and sold them for hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, extremely successful guy, super well connected with great thought leaders and, and whatnot. And uh, I... Uh, Went into that manifestation, went to sleep. Literally the next morning, I got a phone call and I'm on the phone with Gerard Powell. <laughs> I was three way because it turns out the guy who I was working on that project with um, ended up knowing Gerard from past business and he, after talking with me and hearing my story, and then he watched documentary and found out he knew Gerard and Gerard was part of that documentary. He reached out to Gerard. Next thing you know, I'm on the phone with him the very next morning. And let me backtrack a little bit. When I got back from Costa Rica, it felt like I was straddling these two, these two doors, right? It was like straddling this doorway and one foot was in this worldly world, right? And, and everything I was doing over here and the relationships I had and the brands and the, uh, you know, everything I was doing in the world. And then I had one foot in this, in this spiritual realm. And I was like standing there just looking back and forth. Like, I don't know what to do because I, like I have all these responsibilities and obligations and everything over here. 
and this reputation over here, but I feel so called to pursue this and move towards this, right? And so I was like, and when I got back from Costa Rica the first time, you know, I was in this blissful, blissful state. And then when I got to America, especially in Las Vegas, I was immediately bombarded with everything, just American Western business culture and money and greed and people calling me, you got to do this and you got to do that. And you got to, got to, got to, I was like, oh, I've had enough. I got to go back to Costa Rica. And so within a couple of days of being back in Costa Rica, I, I booked a uh, flight to return or being back in America, I booked a flight to return back to Costa Rica. And let me jump back forward to when I was on the phone with Gerard, talking with him, and I say, "Hey, well, you know, what's the one thing that, you know, you're kind of looking for where you're at with this with this whole thing? What's what are you looking to do to take it to the next level?" And he said, "Well, I'm really looking for someone to travel around and speak uh, on behalf of Rhythmia to get people down here." And I was like, "It couldn't have been more perfect. That's exactly what I put into my manifestation on the phone with him the next day." So. Like manifesting is real, and Gerard also taught me a four-step, uh, four-step without fail manifestation uh, way of manifesting things. And so, um, if you want to find out about that, just hit me up, contact me, and I'll point you in the right direction of that, or share it maybe in a later video. But uh, so yeah, I'm on the phone with Gerard, and he goes, uh, tells him, tells me that I'm like, that's amazing. He's like, yeah, well, I want you to be able to, I want you to come down to um, Costa Rica, come to Rhythmia, and experience the whole thing, you know, so you can see if this is something that you want to be a part of. And he says, uh, how soon can you get to Costa Rica? And I was like, that's insane. Like I was like, out of all the places I could have gone to the first time having this experience, I went to Costa Rica, and then I booked the flight literally to go back to Costa Rica. So he says, how soon can you get to Costa Rica? I was like, I'll be there tomorrow. Like I already have a flight booked. And, uh, and so I asked him where in Costa Rica he was located. And out of all the places that I could have gone, he was only about 45 minutes up the road from me. So absolutely no coincidences. And there's probably four or five other synchronicities that lined up just leading up to me, um, getting into a relationship with Gerard and this place, Rhythmia and, and working with them. So now it's kind of just been this long process of kind of um, combining everything I was working on before because it's not all for naught and I'm super excited about that stuff with this newfound conscious um, awakening and the spiritual aspect. And I kind of have this, um, this plan, this idea for it and it's all kind of coming together nicely. Uh, but I just wanted to share this story with you because you know, this is why I haven't been putting much content out. This is why I haven't been on social media much. And um, I've just had a crazy, not, it's, I mean, it's not crazy, but it's almost surreal, but it's in, insanely fulfilling experience over the past couple months. And so now I'm, I've been meditating and um, doing yoga. I've been eating really well. I have a whole new appreciation for my body, understanding that it's this vehicle for this consciousness and that how it's one and connected with everything. So, you know, if, if it's almost like, you know, if you love your mom or if you love, you know, the environment, it's like you got to take care of yourself because what is inside eventually shapes your outside. And a lot of these things sound cliche, but Cliches are cliche because they're true. The problem with cliches is that we become desensitized to them because they get said so much. And then there's a difference. We, we might understand the, the saying or the phrase. There's a difference between say, understanding something and truly knowing something. And I believe knowing something comes from experience. You know, you can understand that a stove is hot, a stove is hot, and people can tell you a thousand times, and you know what hot means, and you know what a stove is. But until you touch that stove for yourself, you're not going to really know that the stove is hot. And uh, so, I mean, I, I feel like I've touched the stove for myself in terms of this spiritual aspect. And I just wanted to share it with all of you, not in a way that's like, hey, I'm a newfound Christian. You guys got to come and do, do this and, and do that. And, uh, you know, this is how you got to live. I'm simply just expressing myself and just going to try to be this light and this love and, and not out of a desire to attract people just because that's expressing like how I am and how I feel now. I have so much love in my heart and so much just happiness and pure joy. It's just I'm overflowing with it and uh, it's, people have been coming up to me and just saying that they can see it in my eyes and they, they see a difference and the way I feel about myself and the world. It's, and 
what it comes down to, and I, I think I'll make a video about this because this one's getting kind of long and I just wanted to share my story with you guys, but what I believe it comes down to is transcending the ego. And it's, I think, one of the biggest limiting beliefs that people have, and especially young people, millennials, is caring about what other people think, and especially in this, in this uh, age of social media. Um, so there's this separation of the, of the ego and the soul. And majority of society lives in fulfilling the ego and building up the ego. But the soul is where that true fulfillment lies. And the ego will take you far in life, but it's never going to bring you to that place of true fulfillment. And so if there's anything that you get out of this, you know, I, I encourage you to um, focus on self-awareness and detach yourself from the ego and detach yourself from emotion. And again, like I said, I'll make a video about this because I think it's something that will help a lot of people and something that I've been experiencing and learning and I've been searching for the answer of how to overcome that limiting belief of what other people think about you. And uh, I think I found the answer. And, and, and as Gerard said, would say, there's, there's a shortcut to happiness and that shortcut, shortcut is the truth. The truth about who you are, the truth about what you are, and the truth about reality. <clears throat> so that's my story and everything I've gone through over the past couple months. I hope that maybe, um, if anything, it was maybe to liberate you to share your story and, and be vulnerable and, and uh, be authentic. So um, I, hope, I hope that you got some, some value out of it and uh, planning on making more videos and being back on the social media and everything like that soon. So if you have any questions on me, I love talking about this. Um, if you want have any questions about Rhythmy or some of the, those books that I read or um, some of the yoga practices or meditations that I'm doing or that, that four-step manifestation process, reach out to me. I'm happy to have a conversation with, with any of you and uh, have a blessed day.